Here we want to look at using u substitution on definite integrals, and what makes an integral definite is these limits of integration here. So we won't have our plus c as our answer, but instead we'll have a number. Definite integrals always evaluate to a number because they are essentially the area under the curve, and the area is a finite number. So we'll look at two methods. I prefer the first method, but I'll show you both ways to approach these things. For method one, we'll use u substitution on the limits of integration. And you'll see what I mean in a second here, but this is the method that I prefer. I think it simplifies things a little bit and gives us less work at the end of the exercise. So let's take a look. We're doing u substitution here, so we're looking for some kind of f of u and a u prime inside the integral here. Um, maybe you see it. What if we let u be, how about x squared plus 1? Then du dx, dx is simply 2x. And we can solve that for dx to get dx equals du over 2x. We substitute the dx in for dx. And for the x squared plus 1, we put in u. That gives us a new integral integral x over u, and the dx was du over 2x. And of course our x's cancel, leaving us with a nice integral 1 half, that 1 half comes out to the front, integral du over u. Now at the same time here, I'm going to do my limits of integration. And the way I think of this is u as a function. So I'll take u as a function of 0, and u as a function of 4. Where am I getting those? Well, these are my limits of integration. So I'm going to choose u substitution on these limits to actually change the limits. What's my u? Well, u is this function here. u is x squared plus 1. So u of 0 is 0 squared plus 1, which is 1. u of 4 is 4 squared plus 1, 17. So now we bring these limits up to our integral Right? So that gives us the integral one, uh, one half the integral from 1 to 17 now of du over u. Well, we need to know what the integral of 1 over u is. And if you try the power rule on this, u to the negative 1, you get um, u to the negative 1 plus 1, which is 0 over 0. So that doesn't work. So you have to know that the integral of 1 over u is natural log of absolute value of u. That just needs to come from memory. But sometimes you get tripped up on the power rule and you remember it that way. So we have 1 half natural log absolute value of u and we're evaluating this from 1 to 17. All right, so 1 half will just hang out in the front. Natural log of 17 minus natural log of 1. Well, natural log of 1 is thankfully 0, so that simplifies things. So how about we just write this as natural log 17 over 2. Note that we don't need the plus c for definite integrals. Okay, let's try another method where we save the u substitution till the very end. So essentially we'll back sub into x's and then evaluate using our original endpoints. In method two, we convert the evaluated integral back to x before evaluating the limits of integration. So let's pick back up on our integral here where it's du over u and then we had a one half out front. We evaluate that, so I'm just leaving the limits of integration off, right? I'm just ignoring them for now. Natural log, or one half natural log absolute value of u, right? No limits. Now I'm going to go back and convert it to x, and then I'm going to add my limits back on. So one half natural log absolute value of x squared plus 1 from 0 to 4. And you can see we'll get the same answer. It's just a slightly different approach. I'll stick with method one. I find it the most useful and somehow very intuitive, but certainly you're free to use method two. Let's just evaluate this out to be on the safe side. One half natural log, uh, let's see, one half times the quantity natural log of 17 minus natural log of one. We don't even need these absolute values. And we get, of course, the same thing, natural log 17 over two. Let's try part B. Part B kind of got forced off the screen there. Part A went a little longer than planned. 
Part B is the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine squared theta times cos theta d theta. Can you see what value we choose for u here? Pause the video and think about it if you don't immediately see it, and we'll compare notes on the flip side. How about we let u be sine theta? We're usually looking for a function inside another function, so the squared will be essentially the outside function, and then sine theta can be our inside function. Well, then we have du equals cos theta d theta, which we can then solve for d theta. Or, of course, you could just plug in right here. Some people do that. That works fine, too. Right there, you can see that it's du. But we'll, we'll keep solving for d theta. d theta, then, is du over cos theta. Now let's do our limits of integration. OK, so these limits. All right, so u, we're treating it as a function now. So u of 0 is sine 0. Well, sine of 0 is 0, so not much change there. How about u of pi over 2? OK, well, that's sine pi over 2. Well, that's 1. So our integral now became 0 to 1. Let's do this out here. So we now have the integral from 0 to 1 of u squared du. What a difference that makes. Evaluate it using the power rule. So we have u cubed over 3 from 0 to 1. OK, we'll quickly evaluate that. 1 third comes out to the front. And we have 1 cubed minus 0 cubed for a final answer of 1 third.